Uh, you do not. Uh, Donald Trump joins us each and every Monday, and he joins us from somewhere in his vast empire. Good morning to you, Mr. Trump. Good morning. What do you think is going to happen with the uh, up on Capitol Hill? Are we going to shut down? Well, it's a mess. It has happened before, but probably never to this extent. And ultimately, it's about dislike. Uh, these are people that truly dislike each other, but it's really about Obamacare. Obamacare was forced down everyone's throat, and a lot of people just don't want to take it, and it's going to be very destructive to the country. When you, when you write your books about bargaining and business, is it important to know uh, what the strategy is going in and the end game going in? Because I am not convinced anyone has an end game on either side, which I think is criminal. Well, I've always said, Brian, that deals are people. It's all about people. You have to know the people. You have to know how to get along with them or not get along with them. You have to know people. And these are people that don't understand each other. They don't like each other. Uh, they don't want to give anybody a victory, even if it's good for the country. And it's a real problem. But Obamacare is uh, causing trauma. You know, it was rammed down everyone's throat. Uh, you had two Democratic houses. You had a a group of people that didn't want it. You had the Democrats that didn't want it. It was rammed down their throat. Sure. And it made it barely, even with strong Democratic, you know, fairly strong majorities. And they, this is what we have. And something ultimately is going to have to happen. It's probably going to fall of its own weight because it is so bad and so destructive and so complicated. I guess it's 2,900 pages, and most people haven't even read it. You know, almost everybody that passed it has never read it. And who's going to read 2,900 pages? So right. the complexity, but it's not the complexity. Look, right. if it's complex and works, that's one thing. But it's complex and it doesn't work. So at some point, they're going to have to do something about Obamacare. But who, who's going to take the blame, Donald? In, in the boardroom here, who's getting fired? Who's going to bear the brunt of the responsibility if indeed there is a sh is shutdown of our government? Well, if you say who gets fired, it always has to be the top. I mean, problems start from the top, and they have to get solved from the top. And the president's the leader, and he's got to get everybody in a room, and he's got to lead. And he doesn't do that. He doesn't like doing that. That's not his strength. And that's why you have this horrible situation going on in Washington. It's a very, right. very bad thing, and it's very embarrassing worldwide. I mean, we had Syria last week. We have now uh, Iran acting like they love us, but all they're doing is buying time, and, you know, we're playing along with the game. It's an amazing That's your thing. conclusion? You're not believing that they've, they've seen the light and the sanctions are killing them? No, I think they think we're not too smart, and they've seen what's been happening in this country for the last number of years. And I think, you know, when I watch him uh, uh, making all these wonderful statements, and yet he doesn't want to show up and shake a hand, it's sort of interesting. But, uh, no, I, I think that they're just biding time and playing for more time. Sure. And eventually there's not much that anybody's going to be able to do. it. You know, it's, it's, uh, to me it's a sucker punch, and I look at it, and it's a, you know, it's a bad situation. Yeah. And, uh, going back to the, the whole government shutdown thing, um, you, you can understand, though, why things are so polarized, and we're at this particular point because so many people, particularly in the House, ran on Obamacare. I'm going to do everything I can to get rid of it or delay it or blow it up in some fashion. So you can understand why it would get to the 11th hour. Well, you know, the interesting thing, I know people in both parties very well. And over the years, I've gotten along with a lot of people in both parties. But uh, the Democrats don't want Obamacare. The Democrats know it's not working. Yeah, but they can't say that on TV. No, they can't. And they have to stay with their party. But a lot of them don't want it. And, you know, one of the things that some of these votes are going to do is Democrats are going to have to vote again which is not what they want to be doing, again, right. for Obamacare, and they're going to be losing elections because of it. But it also brings me back to strategy. Why not pressure the five Democratic senators in red states that are, are going to be lucky to win the next election? Hit those districts with ads. Have somebody join Joe Manchin out of West Virginia on the Democratic side to come forward and go, listen, I'm not happy with a lot of elements here. Let's conference, like Senator Rand Paul brought up. Let's get together because, hey, Mr. President, I'm about to come out against you, and this could be the beginning of a waterfall. A strategy to bring them forward would have been much more encouraging if you're a Republican. Well, it just seems to me, Brian, that the Democrats don't want to make even, you know, they're talking about the medical device tax right. as a method of, you know, compromise. Well, of course, that's important to certain people, and that's great. But it's so small compared to what the real problem is. The real problem is much bigger than that. But they don't want to compromise on anything. And it, it will look like a failure to them. And I understand that. But it'll look like a compromise of any kind will look like a failure to the Dem Democrats. So it's really cast in stone. It could be a mess, and it could be longer than people think. And likewise, something could happen. But 
I don't think the Democrats are going to compromise on anything. You know, the interesting thing is in uh, 25 years and 50 years and 100 years from now, when the government is, you know, when talk, they talk about the government shutdown, they're going to be talking about the president of the United States. Who was the president at that time? Mm-hmm. They're not going to be talking who the head of the House was, the head of the Senate, uh, who's running things in Washington. They're going to be talking about during the Obama administration. Sure. It was a disaster. So uh, guys like Boehner, who is in there working hard, and he's got one of the truly hard jobs of the world, they're not oh, going to yeah. be really discussing him. They're going to be discussing one person. So I really think the pressure is on the president, personally, in terms of his own his own Legacy. history. Yeah. The history books certainly will, will say that, Donald. What about, I mean, we're talking about shutdown of government, but it, shutdown of the private sector and the jobs is, is already happening. I mean, we're seeing full-time employees getting knocked down to part-time, small businesses not wanting to grow to, to middle-size business structure. I mean, you know business better than anybody What's your take on what's going to happen outside of talking specifically health care? Well, what's happening is amazing because people are hiring part-time workers and nobody's mm-hmm. ever seen them before. And they're firing people that have been with them for many years. I mean, people that have worked for a company for 20 and 25 years are now being on a part-time basis. I mean, they end up being finishing out their careers as part-time workers. And that's because of Obamacare, because right. you can avoid Obamacare by having part-time workers. And that's what they're doing. Yeah, and they're and- hiring these part-time workers, and they don't really show up. You know, the, the incredible thing is the unemployment numbers are at 7.3% are so off. I mean, the real numbers are probably 18 or 19%. Mm. But they're hiring uh, part-time workers, and that's not the kind of thing that grows economies. Right. Obamacare is forcing you to do that. Are you a fan of Ted Cruz, real quick, before we have to let you go and you uh, buy a building? Um, are you, do you a, fan, a fan of what Senator Cruz did last week? Well, I, I think probably the end result is everybody knew that just the way it was structured, nothing could have come of it. It was good for Ted. I like Ted. I met Ted and his father when I was in Iowa. I think he's a really uh, hard-driven guy and a good guy. So I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure that particular tactic was the greatest because you knew the outcome was going to be exactly what the outcome was. I do say this. That was good for Ted, and that's okay. For Ted. Uh, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Donald Trump. Okay, thank you very much. It was great to come in. Thanks. Bye.